Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Per Tower Night. And night after night, we indeed have been blessed by wonderful singing and power-packed message from our speaker. And tonight is no other. Tonight is no exception. We have here Sister Jillian with us. Sister Kayomi, I want to inform the congregation here that in less than 24 hours, we have 21,000 people watching. Amen. That really does deserve an amen. So if you are watching right now online, I'm going to ask that you share the link with a friend, put it on your WhatsApp status, and remember that we are streaming live from whatcjclive.com, YouTube, Facebook, Bless TV, NCU TV, and on all the streaming platforms for all the churches in Portmore. Sister Kayomi, what is tonight's topic? Tonight's topic is dust to dust, ashes to ashes. And I am indeed intrigued to hear what the preacher has to say to us tonight. Amen. Congregation, are you intrigued as well? Right, those online, if you are intrigued, I'm going to ask you to put it in the chat. And I want to say a special good night to our online audience. Let me see who I can catch. Sevilla Taylor, Roxanne Evans, Sharon Lewin, Herma Gordon, Teresa Reed, and Nikki Blessing. Thank you for joining us this, this evening. At this time, we will now turn over to Newland Praise. Good night, everyone. We are here again to lift up the name of Jesus. Can someone say and agree with me that sometimes the Christian journey is a hard one? But we're looking forward to meeting Jesus one day, don't it? Sing this one with us.
night, lovely people of God. May we all stand as we pause for prayer. Let us pray. Wonderful and loving Lord, as we come before you, our holy God, we just want to give you thanks for to make that right decision. Be with all the technical team. The stream may go forward, and those that are online may be able to have a wonderful program. Lord, silence the distractions that will come because we know that this is the crusade and it's warfare. The enemy is after us. So silence all the distractions, Father God, at this time as we invite your angelic presence, Father God. Appoint your angelic cherubs at the four corners of this tent and by extension the entire perimeter. Usher the enemy out on his way as we invite your presence. This is your place. We thank, we say you thanks, and we give you thanks for all that you are going to do at this time. Amen. Hello, everyone. Hello. Have no fear. Jesus Christ is here, so you don't need to shed one tear. We are delighted that you are here with us this evening. If you're happy to be here, let me hear you say amen. amen. If you're really, really happy, say praise the Lord. Amen. If you're truly, truly happy, just say thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you're really happy, just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, amen. you look good. Amen. The reason you look good amen. is that I am sitting beside you. So my good looks have rubbed off on you. Amen, amen. This evening, we want to welcome back our former uh, treasurer of CJC, former vice president, Pastor Billy Augustus Watson. Pastor Watson, please stand and be recognized. Give him a big, big amen, my friends. What do you see out there? Pastor Watson is looking so young and fresh. God has been blessing him and his family. He's retired, but he's not tired. What do you say? And so this evening, we want to welcome those who are watching from the United States of America, from Florida and New York, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, all across the USA, we say welcome. To those who are watching us from the U.K., the United Kingdom, we say welcome to you. To those who are watching from Kenya, South Africa, all the other countries in Africa, we say a special welcome. To those who are watching us from Canada, we say welcome. To those who are watching us from the Bahamas, from the Turks and Caicos Islands, from the British Virgin Islands, from all across the length and breadth of this world, we say welcome. To those who are watching us from Clarendon, Manchester, St. Catherine, those who are watching us from Kingston, St. Andrew, Portland, Montego Bay, wherever, St. Thomas, we want to say a big, big welcome to you all. So those who are on my extreme right, I want you to say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm, I'm in trouble tonight. Those who are in the middle, shout glory, hallelujah. Glory. Those who are on this side, say praise the Lord. Praise those who are on my far right, left say thank you Jesus. thank you Jesus so over here so a plus 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 in the middle right here so b over on this side a minus and over there a plus 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 you have done exceptionally well this evening and so brothers and sisters we want you to just enjoy the blessings that the lord has in store for you God has been good to us. There is no place like this place anywhere near this place for this is a place. I want to let you know too that there are some wonderful people who are just across from us here. They are known as called porters. They have some wonderful books that they are selling. These books are just for a very, very reasonable price. I'm embarrassed to tell you how cheap the books are. So go over and patronize these people as they share the love of God. And finally, before I go, I just want to say a shout out to Andre McCall, Barbara Robinson, Coletta Bryan, Classic Roy Brown, and Juanita Bailey. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Remember to bring out Brother Barry, Uncle Larry, Sister Sally, 
tell them do not tarry because we don't want them to be sorry. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Our wonderful ladies from the New Land Church will take us through our fellowship song. It's now time for our fellowship song. Smile, everybody smile. Smile, everybody, everybody smile. smile. Okay, it's your quiz time. I trust you all have your paper and your pen, pencil. I know we have our online audience sitting, waiting and ready. So I'll just do a quick recap of the question with the answers for last night. Blasphemy means someone taking over the role of God. Example, that of forgiveness of sins. The answer is true. Number two, prophetically, the U.S. will work with the papacy to enforce worship to the first beast. True. Number three, you can only get the mark of the beast through worship. That's true. Good, you're bright students. Now for tonight's questions. First question, remember, put T or F. Number one, according to 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 4, the prophet told the widow to close the door behind her and her sons before she began pouring the oil into the vessel. Please put that on your paper, T or F. Number two, all of us have something in our house that God can use to turn our situation around. T or F. Third one, at the wedding feast, Jesus told the servants to fill 30 water pots with water, which he then turned into wine. T or F, and please put your name, your address, your telephone number, and also indicate if you are a visitor or a member. Please, we need that information. Please indicate if you're a visitor or a member. Thank you. The judge turned my way It looks like you're guilty Now what do you say? I spoke up, Your Honor I have no defense But that's when mercy walked in and oh mercy walked in and pleaded my case oh call to the stand God saving grace the blood was Presented that covered my sins, forgiven when mercy walked. Do I have a witness in this place tonight? I stood there in wonder, how can this be? That someone so guilty Has just been set free My chains were broken I felt born again That moment when mercy walked in 
and oh mercy walked in and pleaded my king oh call to the sand God saving grace the blood was presented that hope Forgiven when mercy walked in, and oh, the blood was presented that covered my sin. Forgiven when mercy walked in. Yes, yes, mercy walks in. What a wonderful song and a wonderful experience you are having here. I was watching over the weeks from Ontario, Canada, and I longed to be here because God's blessing is here and a number of persons have been giving their lives to Jesus. And we are grateful and happy. Before I go any further, I'm just asking the following person to meet with Pauline Gale and Elaine Sinclair at the back of the tent. Cherie Miller, Ina Francis, Kerryan Campbell. Please meet at the back of the tent with Pauline Gale and Elaine Sinclair. Yes, at this time, all of us are going to be participating. You have been participating in the prayers but we must participate in the giving. After last night's sermon, I recognize that everybody has something to give. Everybody has something to give. So this outlay is costing quite a lot, but your small amount can help to make somebody make it into the kingdom. Would you like to see somebody into the kingdom and you contribute to it? All right, so tonight we are asking the ushers to stay by because they will be collecting from you your gifts that we are going to put together as last night's sermon indicated that little God is going to bless to make much. And while they are doing that, we are going to pray. And those who are online, you are included in the gift, in the giving. And it will be on the screen shortly where how you may make your contribution. At this time, let's bow our heads wherever we are as we pray. Mighty God, you are a great God and a giver of all good gifts. We thank you for the blessings of life and for having given us the opportunity tonight to participate in the saving of soul. We ask, oh God, that you bless these gifts that, and bless it so much that it will be enough and running over and grant each giver a special blessing tonight. We pray in Jesus name, amen.
Amen, everyone. He is worthy for his good. I'm here to do a public notice. Please take notice that this day has been received by me of marriage as intended to be solemnized between the following persons. Derek Delroy Chores, bachelor, an entrepreneur, and Marlene Sophia White, spinster, shop owner of 771 Tercel Way, Waterford, Port Ford. All objections to a certificate of due publication of bans granted authorizing the celebration of this marriage must be lodged with me in writing within seven clear days from this day by the objector who must appear personally to declare to, to the truth thereof. Notice has been duly given the 20th day of March 2024. To those who have joined us here in person and those such as Sister Yvonne Hutchinson watching from Montego Bay and Sister Lorna Miller French, as you have joined us and watched, we have been going deeper and deeper into the word and the Lord has truly been blessing us night after night and tonight is no different. He has a word specifically for you tonight and once again, Pastor Cheyenne O'Connor has availed himself to be used by the Lord. And Sister Gillian, we have learned so much from Pastor O'Connor, from topics like coming home with a limp, before you get married, part one and part two. And last night, the creditors are coming. Tonight is no exception. Tonight we're gonna hear what Pastor O'Connor has to say on the topic, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. At this time, Pastor Everett Simit will do the prayer of empowerment. You'll agree with me that we serve a prayer answering God. And that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot cure. And he asks us to cast not some of our cares, but all our cares upon him, knowing that he cares for us. And so tonight, as our special feature, we have our prayer, our prayer power night. If you believe in prayer, and you believe that God still answers prayer, and you believe that God still works miracles, Whatever the burdens might be tonight, I want you to join me at the altar as we present them to the Lord. Stand with me and come forward at this time as we sing. Days are filled, let's sing. Days are filled with sorrow. Calvary. 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 Burdens are lifted. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Jesus is very near. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, your hearts are lifted heavenward. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we're happy to know that you are our God. You are the rock of our salvation. You are the one who sticks closer than a brother. You're the one who asks us to cast all our cares upon you, knowing that you're a God who cares for us. And you remind us tonight 
Thy burdens are lifted at Calvary because Jesus is very near. And we're happy to know that you're here under this tent tonight in the form of your Holy Ghost power. So because you're here, your people have come to the altar tonight. They have come with their burdens. They have come with their heavy heartedness. They have come with their difficulties. But oh God, they come tonight looking to you like children looking to their parents for bread. And oh God, as they look to you tonight, we ask that you will let loose your Holy Ghost power upon your children tonight. And we claim, Lord, that you will heal somebody tonight. Give them deliverance tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. We know you have the power to do it. You have the power, Heavenly Father, to quench the fiery furnace. You have the power to close the mount of lions. You have the power to tell the man by the pool of Bethsaida, take up your bed and walk. You have the power but to have that woman who touched the hem of your garment. You are not here in person tonight, but your Holy Ghost power is here tonight. So we reach out by faith, touch the hem of your garment. Somebody need to take up their bed tonight and walk in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we come against sickness tonight. All sort of sickness, cancer, hypertension. It doesn't matter, Lord. We come against it tonight in the name of Jesus. Those who don't have a job, oh God, we ask tonight that you would provide a job for them. Those who don't know where their next meal is coming from, provide for them because the cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to you and you have the entire world in your hand. Those who have been tied down in sin by the devil, set them loose tonight, Jesus. Break down the barriers tonight, Jesus. Set them free tonight, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, deliver somebody tonight. Give somebody a testimony that there is still a God in Israel. We want to give you thanks for your servant, Dr. O'Connor. You have been using him. Your Holy Spirit have been using him, speaking to him night after night. Tonight, Lord, your people have come one more time to hear a word from you. Oh God, anoint him tonight again in the name of Jesus. Pour out your Holy Ghost power upon him tonight. Let loose your Holy Ghost power under the stand tonight, Jesus, so that the people will take knowledge that God is in this place. God's spirit is at work and the devil is a loser. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for hearing our answer and our prayer. Thank you for setting your people free tonight. And we ask God that at the end, we will give you the honor, the glory, and the praise that belongs to you because you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you for hearing and thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, I pray that the people of God say amen. That the people of God say praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Lift your hand and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. According to your faith, be it on to you. The Lord bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Were you blessed?
Amen. That's a powerful intercessory prayer. Evangelist Smith, my good friend and colleague over the years, we're delighted to have him working along with us here at this Countdown to the End campaign. Good evening, everybody. And welcome to tonight's edition. We hope and trust again you had a good day today. Work, did you? Yeah. Amen, amen. Every day is a good day in Portmore. Praise the Lord. And by the way, since I came here, I saw rain. <laughs> I said, Mama, here from the, um, from the Palm in Florida. Good to have these guys around. And all tab every night you come, I give you one until it finish. <laughs> all right. All right, now, now, now this, is a, this is for you, yes, and a copy of this book, Great Controversy. Now, here, here's the plan, here's the plan, here's the deal. Here's the deal, here's the deal. We're not top fight over the book now. <laughs> here's the deal. Uh, if you come back on tomorrow night, not tomorrow, Friday night, Friday night, I'll be giving a copy for each one of you until the 10 is finished. Every night I give one. Is that all right? And five over your co-workers? Co-workers, co-workers, man. Yeah, to get co-workers, which, where, where do you place? Where do you work? Kitty's World Daycare. Kitty's World Daycare. Come on, give it up for them. Kitty's World. Congratulations, congratulations. And I have a copy of my book for your personal book for you. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Is God still coming? You can get this live on Amazon. Yes, make sure you get a copy. All right, congratulations. All right, come on, give a round of applause, give a round of applause. All right, and, and <laughs> okay, she should be okay. Anybody giving, anybody brought neighbors? Five neighbors, 10 neighbors. She's good? Okay. Anybody brought five neighbors? 10 neighbors? No? 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 Okay, any mother brought three children with you here? Any mother brought three children? No? Any father brought two children? Oh, somebody brought three children? Where? Oh, you're coming, come, come with the three children. Yes, 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 yes. You brought three children? Two with the children. Come like one, come like one, come, come like one. From Manchester. We're, we're in Manchester. I am Robin's Hall. All the way from Robin's Hall. Give me a round of applause, yeah. That's, Robin's Hall is Yam country. Yam country, I used to pass it down in Robin's Hall. Congratulations. So those, who, so you're visiting from Robin's Hall. Yes. Amen. And you came up tonight or you came up? Yeah, All right, congratulations, congratulations, Robin's Hall. Hey, uh, who you invite? Two Your two daughters. So these are children, but they're my big children. <laughs> so stay put, don't move, don't move. Let me deal with the little children first. Yeah, so, so I have a children's book. Yes, for bedtime story for the little ones. Is that all right? Amen, courtesy, yes, courtesy, the Cold Porter Ministry. You can pick a pocket, copy downstairs, all right? Congratulations. Three, hey, neighbors, 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 neighbors. Stay put, stay put, stay put. So you brought two of your big daughter. So I give you one copy of my book. Yes, yes. So they'll get one each every night they come. They're not coming back tomorrow night? No, no you have to do some work Friday night to bring them back here. You have to get a, you have to get a work. Neighbor? Yes, congratulations, congratulations. Share it with them. All right, congratulations. The, the, the little book gone. So on Friday night, all right? All, all right, daughter? Yes, hang on, 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 hang on. Most powerful book written the great, anybody have a copy of the great controversy? How many of you have a copy of the great controversy? Look, 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 look in the crowd. How many have a copy of this book? That's a book you must have, great controversy. And this one is the Ministry of Healing. You'll find in it information to deal with all kind of melodies. Congratulations. All right, take care. Come on, give them a round of applause. So Friday night is family night. So you know who you are supposed to bring out. 
You're somebody. Yeah, so if you're married, bring out your spouse. If you're dating, bring out whoever you're dating. And if you're single and need somebody, come church to find a good man or a good man. Friday night, Friday night. All right, let's tell you what's going <laughs> to what's gonna happen on Friday night. Uh, let's see what we have here. Um, okay. Um, tomorrow night, we'll be off. But on Friday night, Friday night, we do the subject... Is it okay to be gay right here? Is it okay to be gay? That's our big subject. Talking about the lessons from Sodom. Make sure you're here Friday night. So family life night. If you have babies to be blessed, bring them out on Friday night as well. And of course, you heard a marriage ban being read here. We have a few more. The, what we're trying to do is put people's life together. Amen. And give them a good start. And then on Saturday morning, when you come, the big presentation... No way no better than yard. I'm getting some, a little challenge with my system here, guys. Um, oh, man. So, not sure what's going on. Hang on. Um, I am not, can I get some technical help here? Not sure what's going on with my system. Okay. Okay, anyway, uh, let's see what happened. That's half of it not showing, but we're, go we're gonna drive this devil out of this place. Amen. Our, our subject should be dust to dust. Here we go. Dust to dust and ashes to ashes. Stand as we sing our theme song. Ancient words, long preserved for walk in this world.
you have brought us back to this spot again. And one more time, we are ready to open your words. But we dare not do so unless we ask for help. So please, Lord, send your Holy Spirit under these tent. Expand our mind, broaden our understanding, and give us clarity in your word. And I pray that at the end, some soul, Will some names will be written down in glory because of tonight's presentation? This is our prayer we ask in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So we're turning our attention to this very interesting subject dust to dust. Ashes to ashes, and we ask you the question, what comes next? You know one of the strange things? You know what is strange thing? Sometimes we don't take we don't we don't take a stock of it. If the Lord does not come, then one by as many of us under this tent, one by one our seats become empty. Have you ever thought of that? One by one, every single one of us will be going, whether we like it or not. Fascinating subject, fascinating subject. To this point in human history, man still cannot find the reason, cannot give the explanation why we all must die. Man scientists cannot find any any, any formula to keep us alive. So here's what I'm putting on the screen. So when died, she was sick for some period of time. And it is $28 billion with a B. 28 billion US dollars. Net worth, 28 billion, which is 21.3 billion pounds. Now, what would you do with that money if you have it? I know what I will do. I'll fix all the roads in Portmore. <laughs> Amen. 28 billion. And then it says, the queen had a separate personal account with 500 million in it. You could, you, could hire, you, could hire, you could hire all the doctors on the planet and you still can't stop you from dying. What is it about that? Steve Jobs, founder of Apple, one of the richest men when he died, $10.2 billion this man had in his net worth. Amen. He could hire all the doctors and all the hospitals put together and all the medication in the world still couldn't stop him from dying. Pancreatic stage four cancer. So, so you thought maybe if you are the head of the church, you wouldn't die. Huh. Pope John Paul II, being the head of the Roman Catholic Church, you could get all the prayers in the world. Amen? You still die. I, 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 I went and did a research on his net worth, and, and, and Google says, the banker's best guesses about Vatican's wealth put it at 10 billion to 15 billion. Money plus, plus prior, and you still die. Fascinating. What it is about death that all the scientists in the world come together, all the universities in the world. We can fly man from here to the moon, but we still can't find the cure for death. And no matter how much you exercise, and no matter how you treat your body right, and no matter how you eat vegetable, you're still going to die. 
It's amazing. It's amazing. You could exercise till you're blue. You're going to die. And you can eat the right food. Sent from, even those who ate manna from heaven still die. So what it is about that? And so that they, they put the 10 greatest scientists together and they still can't cure that. So, so I, I went to do a research and found the reason why. Genesis 2 verse 17 is the problem. That's the problem. Because God, when God created Adam and Eve, put them in the garden and said, God, you know, this is, this is, says, hey, I, uh, there, 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 are, there are two trees that are in the garden. There are many trees, you know, there are many trees, many fruit trees. But there are two God says, I want to bring your attention to. One, if you eat of it, it gives you life. It's called the tree of life. One, if you touch it, you'll die. Yeah. Do you know which one man touched? God command, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall what? And the word that gives me trouble is not die, is the word surely. No, notice, it didn't say immediately. It says what? Surely, surely. The reason why people continue to sin is because they don't drop dead immediately. But if you sin, you will surely die. And that from that day on, we have problems with death. Problem with death. Man, had a, man got a death sentence from the Garden of Eden. Here is it. When God came down to, to see what Adam and Eve, and Eve did, and God decided to hand out the consequences, he looked at Adam and he says, In the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread till. Till. This word till should not have been there. Because when God made man, the intention was for man to live forever. How do we know that? How do we know that? There was a tree of life that was made available to them. Is the church with me? Good. The only tree God told them not to touch is the tree that will kill them. Which means that they had free access to the tree that would give them Life, precisely. So that's how we know God intended. God intended man to go on and on and on and on and on and on. on. What a wonderful thing if that were so. But so the word, so because man mess up, God now has to bend the curve. So you grow up and get old and die. God used the word till. You do what? Return to the ground for out of it you were taken. For thus, thus you are. And to dust you shall return. However pretty you are, dust. Dust to dust. Ashes to ashes. Every one of us. Dust. Just think about it for a moment, Bertie. Think about it for a moment. Dust. Dust. Every one of us underneath it. Tall dust, short dust, sat dust, small dust. But dust. And if people really understand that they are nothing but dust, they would make it easier to give their heart to the Creator. Because whether you give Him or not, you're still going back to the ground. Are we together? Dust. Dust. That's what we are. Dust. This is every one of you under the tent, you are somewhere along this lineup. Pick your spot. Pick your spot. Pick your spot. Pick your spot. You find where you are? But many, many are here. Somewhere, you're, you're somewhere here. Somewhere here. And we all, we, we all heading in the same direction. Is the church with me? No matter who you are, black or white, rich or poor, educated, we're all in the same direction. This is the guy. The here says where you get, you start to earn all the money. See the man with the money back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But by the time you start, this is where you start. Go to school and sweat in the night. You start work, start work, start earn a little money. By the time you start earn a little money and reach here, the knees start get bad, the eyes not see well, the hear not hear well. You have to ask for spare parts in the body. Change out all the spare part. And we're heading down here. You see the problem? So by the time you were, by the time you spend this money, earn this money, you don't have no time to enjoy. 
you earn it and spend it back on doctor. Vanity. Ladies, look, ladies, choose which stage you are. I don't know. You <laughs> Don't you, every one of you ladies under the tent, you are somewhere in this lineup. Go ahead and choose. Choose where you are. Have you found it? Have you found it? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are somewhere, somewhere, somewhere here, somewhere here, somewhere here. You are from the womb to the tomb. But every, every one of us under this tent, and those of you watching online, we are somewhere in this lineup. And it tells you, man, it is, ab Solomon was right. Man is just vanity. Life is just vanity. We are here today. We're gone tomorrow. We're like a banana tree. It bud and it grows. But once the banana shoots, that's what we are. And so the reason why we have church, we are saying to you, hey, before you reach here, Amen. Make sure you take some time out of your lifetime to connect with God and prepare yourself. Because you don't want to end up in the tomb and don't know God. Are we together? You would have wasted, and people waste their time in school and waste their time on the job. And waste their time and waste their time and waste their time and then die. What a tragedy. Tragedy. Complete tragedy. Whether you like it or not, one day they're going to put you on a trolley, bring you into a mug, and put a tag on your toe. That is where we are all ending. And there's nothing you and I can do about it. Nothing. The only thing we can do is prepare for it. And you would be a stupid idiotic person to live your life and don't prepare for this time. You know, it's a fascinating thing because every one of us ending up at the same place, six foot deep. They don't even go six. <laughs> so what I, what I found interesting, what I found interesting is that most people start to make preparation for their debt. Yeah. Some of you even buy your plot already. How many of you have your plot? Some people, some hands are up. Yeah. I decided I'm not going to buy none. Because <laughs> it, it don't, I know my wife is listening, it doesn't matter to me at all where they throw me. It's neither here nor there. All I know, when the resurrector come, I'll be coming up from somewhere. That part I know. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. No matter where you put me. You know, but you know where they put me. So, but, but we're all heading in the same place. So what I, I was at a church in Fort Lauderdale um, last year. And while I was there, um, some insurance agent, agent came by. And they were talking about debt. I'm going to show you what they came to to talk to the old people about, to prepare for their debt. And while I sat there listening to them, it became clear to me that something is missing. Because death is not the end of the story. Are we together? Yes, 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 yes. Your journey, watch me, watch, listen to the preacher. Your journey does not end at death. No, no, no. There's one more phase after that. Yes. Here, here's the text. Here's the text. Here's the text. Hebrews 9, 27. Here's what it says. And help me read. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after, after the death comes what? Judgment. Yes, yes, yes. Death is not the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't close the book at that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You put down the pencil, you stop writing, but the book is open because there's some, one more item on your agenda after that, and that is judgment. So I sat in that auditorium, listened to these um, insurance people, and I, and I, and I found it interesting. Uh, they, were, they were funeral insurance policy they were selling. 
Meaning, you can buy an insurance policy to help pay for your funeral expense. <laughs> and I, they're listening to these people, and they have a prepaid policy and funeral insurance. You have a limited funeral home, no added benefit. Money is paid to funeral home, and you can transfer from one to the other. And they went through all, and they went through all. And I said to myself, hmm. These insurance companies are helping people to prepare for their death. But who is helping them to prepare for the judgment which comes after the death? See the problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, hey, hey, hey. who is preparing you for the judgment after death? Can we spend so much time preparing for that, making will and decide who's going to bury me and where we're going to bury and all that. Yeah, yeah. Who is preparing for the judgment which is more important than the debt? What kind of preparation have you made? Because it is coming after death comes judgment. How many of you have a judgment policy? That's the problem. So the Bible says, after it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death comes what? So permit me then to share with you a little insurance policy for the judgment. Amen? And then you have to decide whether you want to buy it or not. So let's start. Let's, let's start. This subject, if I ever announce that I'm going to preach on judgment, half a port more don't come. People, people, people don't like to hear about no judgment. They get scared. People like to hear that God gonna bless me. Amen. Yeah, yeah. God gonna bless me. Bless me. If if I'm preaching on that, people will come. You know, name it and claim it and take it home and frame it. Sermon. That's a sermon a lot of people like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to hear no judgment because they get scared. Now, if any of you get scared because of the judgment, something is wrong. Because the judgment is a sweet story. Yeah. Amen. So can we, can, we, can we explore it a little? Yeah. But whether you like it or not, the Bible says, after you die, judgment. So get prepared for, prepare for it. Prepare for it. So let, let, let's, I'm going to introduce you to the first piece of warning that Paul gave to the church. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. Paul says, help me read. For we, for we must all, every single man, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may what? Receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So Paul says, every job man and Jill woman going to stand before the judgment seat. You cannot escape it. There's no way around it. It is mandatory. Is the church with me? Mandatory, mandatory. Here's how the New International Version reads that verse. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will, read with me, we will each, what? Receive whatever we deserve for our good or evil we have done in the earthly body. Judgment on the planet. Judgment on the planet. Question, brother preacher. How comprehensive is this judgment? Tell us a little about it. Well, here is, here, here's, here's Solomon in Ecclesiastic 12, verse 12. Solomon says, let me read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Solomon says, in preparation for judgment, what must we do? Fear God and do well. Keep his commandment, for this is man's all. Verse 13, help me read. For, for, for God will bring every deed into the judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it's good or... Yes, sir, it is coming up. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything you don't want to come up? Is there, <laughs> is there anything you don't want to 
come up in the judgment. Because if you have, if you have hidden thing, yeah, they're going to come up. If you don't want them to come up, I can tell you how to get rid of them. Yes, I can tell you how to get rid of them before the judgment. Remind me here. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. And for those of you watching online, if you have a hidden thing that you don't want to come up, there's a way to keep them down. There's a way to cast them in the bottom of the sea that they are remembered no more. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. But let me go on, let me go on. So, big question, big question. This is one of, one of the reasons why some people are afraid of the judgment. Who is going to be the judge? This is, this is, the, this is the nice part. Watch this. this. One of the nicest te um, um, texts in the Bible is this one. I'm in the book of Se Acts chapter 17. I'm in verse 30. Hear what the Bible says. Help me read. Truly, these times of ignorance, God what? Overlook. But now he command all men in Portmore and around the world, everywhere to do what? To repent. Now, there's a comma here, which means that the sentence is not finished. Am I right? Good. So you require all men everywhere to repent. Here's why. Verse 31. Be to repent because he has appointed. Hey, take time to read this. Because he has what? Appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. And he has given us assurance of this by raising him from the dead. So, so hang on. I went to that text and I want to pull out couple of things. Number one, I noticed the text says he has a appointed a day, which means that the judgment date, help me preach, is set. That's what the text is saying. It's already set. If you, if you steal into God's office and, and, and turn over his calendar and peep into God's calendar, you will see a date with planet earth. For judgment. The text says the day is already appointed. So you know this is serious stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm going to share the day with you. What did the preacher just say? Yes, you heard me right. Yes, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to share the date with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what people don't know, listen. I can tell you right up front. The date for the judgment is not a secret. It's in your Bible. God told us when it will start. What God didn't tell us is when it ends. Hey, 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 hey. God, God, yeah, God is like a good teacher. You know, some teachers, nice God. How many teachers are here? How many teachers are here? Teachers? Oh, you all don't have teachers in Portmore? Oh, some teachers are here. Bless you. You have some good teachers, you know. Nice, wonderful teachers. And then you have some terrorists. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. God help you if you, want, if you get one of the terrorists. But yeah, you have some good teachers. Here are the good teachers. Man, they want you to do well so that even when the test is coming up, they can't tell you exactly what's on the test. But they will drop a little hint. Sister Karen was a good teacher for many years. She, said, she will drop a little hint and say, word for the wise is sufficient. <laughs> or they say, I, I can't tell you, but study the whole of this area and the whole of that area. Is the church with me? Yeah, giving you a little idea where you should work. God is like that. God says, the date, I give it to you. But when it ends, that's top secret. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hang on, hang on. So we know the date is, has been appointed. Okay, go back in the text and see what we need to find it. Uh, he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man. Oh, that's what we're looking for. Who is going to be the judge? Well, not only is the day appointed, but the judge by the man whom he has. Oh, so the judges are also appointed and ordained. Hmm. Date is appointed. Members of the health department. 
Amen. The date is appointed. And the judge is already ordained. Is the church with me? And then the text says, and the text says, God, then, 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 this is Paul talking to the guys at Mars Hill. And then Paul tells them, God has given us assurance. God has given us what? Assurance of this man being the judge by doing what? Raising him from the dead. Oh, ho, ho, blues, clues. So how did, who did God raise from the dead? Jesus Christ. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, so you didn't know. Hey, so you didn't know. You didn't know. One of the reasons why Jesus had to get up Sunday morning, he has work left to do. Can't stay in the grave because his father has another assignment for him. Is the church with me? So the big good news, you can walk away from here. It appears like Jesus will be the judge. But preacher, do you have any more confirmation of that? Um, I'm, I'm glad you asked me. Here is it. If you doubt the preacher, here is it, here is it, here is it. You, by the way, how many of you would be happy that Jesus is the judge? Yeah, 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 man. You know why? Because Jesus and I are friends. I spoke to him this morning. Are you with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are closer than a brother. My Jesus is to me. He's my dearest friend. Yeah. So if your dearest friend is your judge, you're standing a good business. Amen. I don't want anybody to leave here scared of the judgment. Because the big news on the headline tomorrow, your best friend is the judge. Where's the confirmation, preacher? Well, here's it. John 5, 22. Here's Jesus. Read for me. Read. One, two, three. The Father judges no one but has committed all judgment to the Son. So when I call you to give your heart to the Lord, amen, you should rejoice. I'm preparing you for the judgment. But if you say, no, I have to work. No, I don't marry as yet. No, Ray, Ray, Ray. Then you and Jesus are going to run up in the courthouse. Amen? Yeah. So Jesus will be the judge. So, so, so the, the question you need to ask me is, how many things Jesus is going to be? We, we met him as a lamb. Am I right? Yeah, yes. When he came here, he came here as a lamb. Here's the text. Uh, John 1, 29. Next day, John was see Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the lamb of God that what? Take away the sin of the world. Here's Isaiah describing Jesus. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. So in the first role, the first role Jesus played when he came here was that of a Lamb. That's why he was born in a manger among animals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's why we sing. Mary had a little lamb, lamb, lamb. That's why, that's why the cows were mowing. That's why the Christmas child said, Prep for a bed, little Lord Jesus lay down. Yeah, 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 that's the song. The cattle are lowing. What's cattle? What is cattle? Cow, which means that he born among animals. Because his role is that of an animal. Is the church with me here? Yeah. So he came as a lamb. And the purpose for the lamb was that the lamb should be slain. That's why they kill him on Friday evening. Watch the preacher. They buried him as a lamb Friday evening. But when he rose on Sunday morning, he rose in a new capacity as a high priest. See the problem? Yeah, yeah. He, ro he, he rose on the morning as a high priest. And what's the function of the high priest? The high priest function is to take blood and go into the sanctuary and make atonement on behalf of the sinners. That's why on the morning when Mary grabbed unto him, he said, Hey Mary, don't touch me. I've not yet ascended unto my father, unto your father. So he changed role. Here's Hebrews 4, verse 14. Let me read. Seeing then that we have a great... High priest who has passed through the heavens. Who is he? Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. If you missed that, here's birth, next verse. He, Hebrews 8, verse 4. Now this is the main point of these things. We are saying we have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne in the majesty of. So he came as a lamb. 
Amen. Because we needed a lamb in order for our sins to be forgiven. Are we together? He died as a lamb Friday and he rose Sunday as a priest. Why? Because we needed a priest to intercede on our behalf. Are we together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went back to heaven and now interceding as our high priest. That's why we can go straight to him and say, Abba, Father, forgive me. That's why we don't need to go to no Catholic priest to ask for forgiveness. Because we have a direct throne to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Is the church with me? Yeah. Both as a lamb and as a priest. So when will Jesus change role from priest to judge? When? <laughs> when will that happen? And then another question, where will he do the judging? Will it be down here when he comes or up in heaven? I'm going to take the last question first. Is that all right? Where will the judgment take place? Let's start with that one. Where will the judgment take place? Well, Daniel give us a, pre a preview of it. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, Daniel says, I watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like what? Pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame. Its wheels a burning fire. Verse 10, I saw a fiery stream. And he came forth from before him. And then he says, I saw thousands, thousands ministered to him. And I saw 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Then Daniel says, I saw the court was seated and the books were open. Judgment. Ha. Books. You know, if you go to court, you can't go to court with word of mouth. That's why you have to give the police a statement. Yes, everything is recorded, is documented. Everything is written in a book. The books were open. Hang on, hang on. This is Daniel. Uh, and, and Revelation, Revelation 20, verse 12. Uh, tell us a little bit more. Here's what John said. That was Daniel in the Old Testament. John saw the same thing in New Testament. John says, then I saw the dead. Small dead and great dead stand before God. And what happened? And the books were open, judgment time. And then John said, and another book was open, which is the book of life. Yes. And the dead were, what are the things written down there? In case you don't know, Angels record with unerring accuracy every action, every word, every thought, every movement documented. 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 The book, I'll tell you about the book of life. The book of life does not carry any activities. What it carries is a list of names. It's like the registrar. Is the church with me? Yes, yes. Sir. The book of life is a roll. You hear what they say? When the roll is called up yonder? Yeah, that's, that's the book. That's the book. So when you give your heart to the Lord and get baptized, your name is written in the book of life. If it is not in there, it's better you weren't born. But notice the text says, and, and books with an S. Have you seen that? Yes, yes we're open. So, so I went over, and, and verse 11 says, and I saw, and this is verse 11. It's telling you where it takes place. It says, I saw a great white throne. Once you see this, you know it's in the throne room of heaven. Is the church with me? And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place. So the books were open up in heaven. Now, why is God opening the book? Answer, because he is reviewing the records of every somebody under the tent tonight. Mm -hmm. See, they don't tell you these things in church, because you won't come back.
Let me show you one other book. There's another book that is open. It's called the book of remembrance. Malachi 3, 16. Here's it. Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And, and let me read. And a what? A book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the Lord. And that, and that what? So this book carries the activities of all God's children who fear him. Hallelujah. So, so your name will be on the Lamb's book of life. But the things that you do will be written in the book of remembrance. Mm -hmm. God not taking no, no chance, no hearsay. It's documented. So what's in your book? What's in your book? Here's a great controversy. Page, I gave out some of that book tonight. Great controversy. Page 481. Here's a servant of the Lord. It says, let's read it slowly. Every man's work passes in what? Review before God. And is registered for faithfulness or unfaithfulness. Opposite each name in the books of heaven is entered with terrible act exact. Look at her words. With terrible exactness. With terrible exactness. Every wrong word. Every selfish act. Every unfulfilled duty. Every secret sin. Whether every artful dissembling. Heaven sent warnings or reproves, neglected. Every time a warning go out and a call go out and you turn that God down, it's documented. Are you hearing me? Every call I make under the tent and you walk out of here, it's documented. It's going to come back up in the day of judgment. Wasted moments, unimproved opportunities, the influence exerted for good or for evil with its far-reaching result, all are chronicled by the recording angels. Hang on, because I'm going to show you two more texts as it relates to the things that are in the book. If your name in the book, is it possible that it can get, it can come out? Ha! Here's the Lord declared to Moses. When Moses says, Lord, if you don't forgive these people, when they mess up, then, 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 then block me out of your book. Moses is a serious guy, you know. Here's God's response. God says, whosoever hath sin against me, him will I blot out of my... So those who sin against God, come on, help me. Those who sin against God, God will blot you out of the book. So the fact that your name gone in, don't mean that it's in permanently. Aha. Uh -huh. Are we together? You have to maintain that relationship with Jesus to keep it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what he told Ezekiel. Yeah, Ezekiel 18, 24. When the righteous man turns away from his righteousness, meaning when he backslides from the church, when he abandons his God and he commits iniquity, here's what the text says. All his, help me read, all his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned in the judgment. That's what the text say. Amen. That's what the text say. That's what the text say. Next point I want you to leave here. Judgment. Ha, a lot of people get this thing wrong. Judgment will. Hey, read my lips. Put that camera on me. Hey, put that camera on me. Let me talk to the people. Uh, Outside of Portmore. Read my lips. Judgment, listen to me carefully. Judgment will not take place when Jesus comes. Judgment will take place before Jesus comes. 
Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Get, get, get it straight, get it straight. God will review the records before he comes. Here's a text, here's a text, here's a text. Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, let me read. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. How does he know who's to get what? Judgment has already taken place. So when Jesus come, judgment finish. He that is filthy will remain. Filthy still, he that is holy will remain. Holy still, probation, closed, office closed, book closed, everything done. So the review of our record is taking place in heaven before Jesus comes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So when will Jesus change role from high priest to judge? When will the judgment begin? We know it will take place in heaven. When will it begin? You ready for this? Fascinating. God, you know, you know, I tell you, God is like a good teacher and a good grandma. You know, good grandma, they beat you, but they still hug you. <laughs> Yeah, God, God is like a good teacher, a good grandma. He does not want anyone to perish. Are you with me? So he gives us as much information as is possible. And then say, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Okay, so the judgment begins in heaven. We are not in heaven, so we won't know when it starts. Is the church with me? Yes, stay with the preacher. Because it's taking place in the throne room of heaven, John says, I saw a big white throne and him that sat upon it and the books were open. So because the review of our record is taking place in heaven and we are living on earth, God wanted to send a signal down here to let us know that things start up there. Is the church with me? Good. So Revelation chapter 14, here's the text. John says in Isle of Patmos, he had this revelation. He says, I saw another angel fly where? In the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, king, red tongue, and people. There's a comma, which means that the sentence is not finished. I'll continue in verse, saying with a loud voice, fear God. Give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is. Pause, 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 pause. Pause. I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up. Um, John says, I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven. Sent a stage in the universe. Put his mouth down to planet earth. And cry with what kind of voice? Loud voice in what kind of language? What language? Every language. Are we together? To them that dwell in every nation, to every kindred and tongue and every kindred, every nation, every tongue, every drop man. The angel took center stage and with a loud voice talked to all the inhabitants and planet earth. What is the message so important? People and planet earth fear God for judgment start in heaven. Out of his mercy, he put us on notice. And yet still all the churches are silent. This is a message every pulpit should be preaching every weekend. But the churches are silent. When God sent an angel out to them, warn all the people, warn them, tell them things start in heaven, judgment start in heaven, books are open, records are being reviewed, get ready for the end. We have church preaching all kind of rubbish. When the purpose of the pulpit is to wake the town and tell the people. The purpose of the pulpit is to call men and women back to the foot of the cross and warn them that God is on his way. Hey, hey, the purpose of the pulpit was to echo the angel's message. 
Okay, on your television pro, uh, Sunday morning, you'll never find a preacher preaching this one. And it's in the Bible. An angel fly in the... Why you think he took mids of heaven? Mids, middle. Center stage where every point on the compass. You can hear him. Is the church with me? Because God does not want any nation to say, we didn't hear. Well, Portmore can't say it because I'm telling you now, judgment has already begun. Notice the language. It is in the present tense. Present perfect. Here's it, here's it, here's it, here's it. Uh, for, for the, hey, give glory to God for the hour of the judgment is, is. Is, is here. And most people in the world don't know that up to now. Hang on, hang on. So if it is here, when did it start? Here's a good news translation of this very same text. He said with a loud voice, honor God and praise his greatness for the time, help me read, for the time has come for him to what? Judge all the people. So question by the preacher. Question, question. Una pregunta. One question. One question. When did God send out this notice? Is the church with me? Yes, when, 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 did, this, when did God send out this notice? Fascinating stuff. The book of Revelation, is the church still with me? The book of Revelation was written A.D. 96. A.D. 96. Stay with me. That was written in the Bible from when? A.D. 96. Yet, 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 yet. It was not until 1844 when that sermon started to be preached. Uh -huh. Stay with the preacher. It was not until when? 1844. The, the world got this message under the midnight cry. Ah. Which means for over 1700 years, the message remained silent. Why was it silent? Because judgment didn't start as yet. Is the church with me? Yes, yes, judgment didn't start as yet. No, 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 no. Judgment didn't start as yet. It was not until this man, a little old farmer, that God raised up. And God raised up who decided to study the book of Daniel. Hear the preacher. And came across the, the prophecies of Daniel that troubled his soul. He wrestled with the Lord for six years. He came across this text in Daniel 8 verse 14 that says, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be. And he was troubled by that. Stay with the preacher because I'm going somewhere. He was troubled by that text. Why? Because he understood what this meant, sanctuary be cleansed. You see, if you are a Jewish boy or girl back in the Old Testament, you would know what that means. But in Portmore 2024, you don't have a clue. So let me tell you. Let me tell you. Sanctuary being cleansed. This terminology, sanctuary being cleansed back in the Old Testament Jewish system. It is the day of the year when the sanctuary that retained the sins of the people would be cleansed by the high priest. That still don't make any sense to you. So, let, so stay with me. Stay with me. Let, let, me help, let me help you with a little bit. Let me help you. Let me help you a little bit. It's important that you follow me. Are you still following me? It's important that you follow me. See, see, back then, back then, well, nowadays, when you want your sins to be forgiven, all you do is bow your head and say, Lord, forgive me. Am I right? Back then, it was not that easy. Back then, if you want your sins to be forgiven, if you're living in one of these tents, 
Listen, when the children of Israel march and when they stop, they would put the, they would put the sanctuary in the middle of their encampment and you have three tribes on the east, three tribes on the west, three tribes on the north, and three tribes on the south. Is the church with me? Yes, and, this, and God in the sanctuary would be in the middle. Are we still together? Yes, so when a person sin in this tent, let's take this tent here and they commit a sin. Give me a sin. What sin they do in this tent? Huh? They lie, okay? Let's say they lie. They tell one big lie in this tent. Is the church with me? For them to get forgiveness, they can't just pray, Lord, forgive me. No, 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 no. Because they don't have no high priest in heaven. Are we together? Because Jesus didn't die as yet. Are we together? So what they needed to do, they needed to get a lamb and carry that lamb all the way, all the way to the sanctuary. Is the church with me? They need to kill it here and the priest would collect the blood and take it in here and make atonement on their behalf. Are we together? So now when they kill their lamb here, the sin, the lie that they tell would be transferred from them over to the lamb and into the lamb's blood. And the sin would be carried to lodge inside the sanctuary and the priest would make atonement on behalf of the sinner. Are we together? Good, 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 good. Watch this, watch this. So every year, every day, they would carry their sins into the sanctuary. They would carry their sin into the sanctuary. One day out of the year, God says the sanctuary must be cleansed. When that day comes, every Jewish person knows that's the day of judgment. In other words, if you have any sin, you need to get it in before that day comes. Because if that day comes and catch you on your sin, they will cut you off. Is the church with me? So everybody knows this as the day of, of, of judgment. And so when Daniel used that language, eh, William Miller recognized this is serious stuff. He's talking about judgment. Unto 2,300 days, then judgment will begin. So he went searching. And he says, Daniel had a little problem with it when he got the vision. Daniel says, Lord, you give me this vision, but I'm still confused. And the Bible says he went back to pray and wrestle with God for more information. And God sent an angel to give him the information. What Daniel wanted to know, okay, 2,300 days from now, the, the sanctuary will be cleansed. When will it start? When does the clock in heaven start to count off the 2,300 days? Is the church still with me? Yes, 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 yes. Now, William Miller knows, William Miller knows that in prophecy, a day is equal. A year, we have two texts to back that up. So William Miller knows, okay, then it means that within 2,300 years, then the judgment will begin. But when will it start? So he went back to Daniel and found Daniel 9 verse 24. The angel of the Lord came back to Daniel and said, Daniel, know this therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build. Now what happened to Jerusalem? Jerusalem was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. That's why Daniel was in Babylon as a prisoner. Is the church with me? Good. So, that, so the, the angel says, Daniel, whenever the king down in Babylon tell all the Jews that they can go back home and rebuild Jerusalem, once you get that decree, that's when you start to count your 2,300 years. Are we together? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That decree came by King Artaxerxes in 457 BC. Are we together? Yeah, 457 BC. King Artaxerxes suddenly command all the Jews, you all can go back home and rebuild your temple. Once that date was announced, the clock in heaven started to tick. William Miller, therefore, count of 2,300 days from 457 B.C. and end up in 1843. But because he transferred from B.C. over to A.D., he had to add back one year, landing back in 1844. In fact, he penciled it down to the very day, October 22nd, 1840. Four. Write that date down in history, October 22nd, 1844. Well, my good friend William Miller went out under the conviction of the Spirit of God and he preached. Watch me, watch me. He preached. Judgment is coming. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. Judgment is what? 
coming. Yes, it was called the midnight cry. He pre- the whole of United States and Australia and other parts of the world. China, when he got this, and he said, yes, Jesus, I'm going out to preach. And he got the whole world's attention that Jesus is coming. Judgment day is coming. Sun rose the morning of October 22nd, 1844. People start singing, it may be at morn. When the sun. You know the song? They start to sing, looking for the coming of Jesus. No Jesus. Somebody said, well, maybe it's at midday. So they waited until midday. All great anticipation. No Jesus. Then they waited till maybe it's evening. Evening came. No Jesus. Somebody said, well, the bridegroom cometh at midnight. So now it got to be midnight. They waited with bated breath. For midnight. Midnight came. No Jesus. The following morning, William Miller was so disappointed. It became known as the great... Have you heard about it? As a, you can look it up on Google. It became known as a great disappointment. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Hey, 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 watch this. Half of the people who were ready to go heaven yesterday walk out of the church. Is the church with me? Yes, yes, yes. Walk out of the church. William Miller was broken. And he and his team went back on their knees. And they says, God, what went wrong? God draw the curtains and show them the change from priests to judge. God showed them the change of the high priest moving from the holy to the most holy. The last phase. God showed them, hey, judgment began, yes, but not where you thought it would be. Are you with me? The whole world's attention was gained because God wanted the world's attention to know that judgment begin upstairs. And so the team went back on the road shouting hallelujah. Judgment has begun but not on planet earth. It is where? In heaven. So now I can tell you with certainty since October 22nd, the judgment has already begun. Now when will it end? That's the secret. God don't share that with anybody. Because when it's end, when it's end, hear what the text says. Read for me. He that is unjust, let him be on one of hey, one of these days up in heaven. Stay with the preacher. If you're sleeping, wake up. If you're sleeping, wake up. God has begun the review of man's record. Point one. Point two, he starts from the first set of human beings, Adam days, all the way down to our generation. Are you with me? Good, 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 good. Point number three, when he reaches the last person and close the book, hey, hey, he will put down the garb of a judge and put on his crown as a king and take up his scepter. Are you with me? And he decided, hey, open up the doors of heaven and step out to call his children home. He would finish the role of a lamb, finish the role of a priest, finish the role of a judge, coming now as a king. So when you have Jesus, you have lamb, you have priest, you have judge, and you have king. Why would you not accept him? So when the last 
I don't know whose record will be the, when the last file on his desk is reviewed and he closes it from the portals of heaven, the following will be announced. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is what? Filthy, let him be filthy. It's the first time in Bible, Bible is not encouraging filthy people to get clean. Why? The cleaning shop closed. Mercy over. Hey, no intercessor, are you with me? No blood flowing. So if he catches you in that position, you are frozen there. That's why the Bible says, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Come to Jesus, confess your sins, get yourself clean up before your name is called up in heaven. You see this, this judgment where God reviewed the records before he comes. We call it the pre-advent judgment. The investigative judgment. Here's this, hear this, hear this. Here's what I want you to, two things I want you to understand. Sinners, the wicked, will not be part of this judgment. They, their judgment will come a little later. So who will be in this judgment? All people who once claimed God as their personal savior. All the profess, put in another way, in Old Testament language, all the persons who killed an animal and got blood lodged in the sanctuary. Does that make sense? All persons who at one time in their life claim Christ to be theirs. These people will be in the judgment. So you know where the judgment's starting? Here's, here's it, here's it, here's it, here's it. This is, this is a warning for church people, here's it. For the, help me read, for the time has come for judgment to begin where? At the house of God, which means, hey, hey, which means, which means, which means, on God's desk is church people file on the top. Amen. How many, how many of you want your file to be the first one open? Oh, Lord, attend. Everybody hand down. <laughs> Judgment will begin where? First set of records God reviewing are people in the church. Hang on, hang on. And then Peter says, and if it begins with us first, then what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And verse 18, he says, he closed with this warning. Help me read. Now, if the righteous one is Scarcely safe. Where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? You, you understand the burden I have? When I hear preachers preaching rubbish. When the word of God is supposed to be preached. And call people to the Savior. Hey, and giving people a second chance. Hey, hey, hey. So one of the reasons we're in this tent, I'm saying to Portmore, you are my brothers and sisters here. I don't want you to die and go to hell. Give Jesus Christ your life tonight. Because he will be your judge. Are you with me? It is his blood died for you. Can you imagine when you come up in forth, when your name come up and he knows that his blood was shed for you. He knows that you wash under his blood. Hallelujah. When you come up in the judgment, he'll say, Father, this is one of mine. He's covered. And the Satan, and Satan point out all this sin he used to do. And Jesus says, hey, look at it. My blood has stamped pardon and forgiven. It doesn't come up in judgment. That's 
That's why you give your heart to the Lord. That's why you get baptized. Because your name is going to be called up in heaven. And you want to make sure. Amen. That it is well with your soul. You want to make sure. It is well with your soul. Not with your husband's soul. Or your wife's soul. Your soul. When it comes to salvation, you are alone. Not your children. A lot of people worry over their children and their soul not well. With your own soul. So tonight as I close, as you sleep tonight, your record may very well come up for review. Now, just consider this. Your record may very well come up for review. And if it does, if it does tonight, how will it be with you? And by the way, it's not, just, it's not just folks who have not yet given their heart to the Lord. Some members of the church, how will it be with you? Is it well with your soul? Some of you make co-workers sending your soul to hell. Because you fight and get cantangros every day. Is it well with your soul? Is it well? With your soul. That's why we have church. That's why we have church. I close. I close. I cannot close. God would not be pleased with me. If I do not extend a call. An invitation. For somebody, anybody, that God brought here tonight. As you sit on your, in your seat and you think about your record being open tonight. If you know it is not well with your soul. Don't leave this tent tonight unless you come forward and say, God, I don't think it's okay with my soul. And I don't want to run the risk. So I'm coming forward to ask you, Jesus, for cleansing. To ask you forgiveness. I'm coming to surrender what is left of my old soul in your hand. I'm coming to ask for pardon. That your blood can stamp on my record forgiven. So if the roll is called up there, it will be well with my soul. I'm going to pray. I don't know who that is, but as the praise team sings, I open that altar and I say, come and join me. 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 Says, God, I am not taking no chances with my soul. I'm not taking no chances with my soul. Come and join me. Come and join me. Not taking no chances. Not taking no chances. Not taking no chances, not taking no chances. God bless you, come and bless, God bless you, come. And not taking no chances, God, God bless you. Come, not taking no chances, God bless you, God bless you. I don't know what will be on my record. If my record opens tonight, if my record opens tonight, if my record opens tonight, I want it to be well. Come, 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 come. to be well with Jesus. God bless you. Come. God bless you. Come. 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 Put your hand in God's hand. God bless you. Come. Come. Come in the name of Jesus. Come. 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 Not taking no chances. Not taking no chances. Not taking no chances. Not taking no chances. Not taking no chances.
on. Mother and father, brother and sister, wife and husband, co-worker and friend, come. Come. God bless you. God bless you. They're coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. My sin, not in part, but a whole. sing that song is nailed to the cross god bless you i see you coming god bless you it's nailed to the cross yes and i fear it and i bear it no more praise the lord praise the lord still coming god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you there is yet another soul that is struggling yet another soul that is struggling yet another soul that is struggling can I ask you for just one more minute because there is another soul that is struggling if you feel the Spirit of God tugging at your heart don't fight God don't fight God he wants to save you he wants to save you your record may very well come up tonight this may be your last chance. Hear the voice of the preacher. Don't fight God. We're going to sing the next stand, the last stanza again. Give you one more chance to come. Because if you turn God down tonight, it's going on your record. It's going on your record. One last chance. One last chance. One last chance. Take the last stanza. Is there anybody else? And Lord.
say amen. God bless you. God bless you. They're still coming. They're still coming. Every night, I give you a card. Every night. And I take them home. And I pray over them. Pray over them. Ask God for deliverance for you. Ask God for breakthrough for you. I'm going to ask my assistant to give everybody a card. Keep the card in your hand when you get it. Can we give everybody a card? Everybody a card. You all get a card as well? If you get a card, you get a card, there's no card right here. Give everybody a card. Everybody, some gentlemen right here who don't. You get a card? Okay. You have pen and paper. You need paper. You need pen. This lady don't get a card. Don't get a card. Get a card. Write your name, telephone number, and address on the card. Go ahead. You got a card? Write your name, telephone number, and address on the card. Everybody, your name, telephone number, and address. Your name, telephone number, and address. Go ahead. Everybody with a card. The little ones and the big ones. I am going, that's how you talk to me. I am going home to intercede on your behalf. Everybody with a card. Big ones and the little ones. Mom, you can write up for the little ones as well. Everybody need to be saved. If your record comes up tonight, the last entry on your record must be that you are at the altar tonight giving your heart to God. Last entry on your record. Last entry on your record. Take that card. Take that card. Name, telephone, number, and address. There are four questions on the card. If you have not yet given your heart in baptism and that's your commitment, God, I want to be ready when you come. I want to surrender my life in baptism. Go ahead and tick number two or three in your paper. Go ahead and tick that one. That's why we're calling you tonight. Is it well with your soul? Is it well? It's not just for prayer. We want prayer to change your life. So that you can make it home to glory. So go ahead and tick that. Tick that. I don't see some people have no card. No card. Where's your card? No, give her a card. Give her a card. Give her the card. Give everybody their card. Everybody their card. Put your name, telephone number, and address. Because I'm going home to pray for you tonight. And there are, if it is your commitment, this coming Sabbath will be our next baptismal service in the name of Jesus. God, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready, but I am throwing myself at you. Whatever is left back of this old sinner, take it and make it into something, God. And if I should die before I wake, let the last entry be, I came to the altar to surrender. Hear the preacher, hear the preacher, hear the preacher. God doesn't call righteous people. He calls sinners. He doesn't call holy people. He calls people who make mistakes, people who blunder. Is the church with me here? That is you God call. He wants you to be saved. Go ahead and make that commitment on your paper tonight. By faith. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but God, I'm trusting in you. Trusting in you try everything and everything fail I'm going to try Jesus tonight because I want to be well with my soul. When they throw my, carry my body down in the casket dust to dust ashes to ashes hey it must be well it must be well with my soul make that commitment because you know what I really don't know which of you standing in front of me will be the next to go I really don't know. Neither do you. So the Lord says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Let your paper be exhibit A. Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Once you have done that, once you have done that, once you make your commitment on the paper, make your tick on the paper, I will collect it. I'm going to ask my... Bible assistants to help me collect all of these papers. Can I get back my papers? It is well as we collect these papers. One of the most difficult thing is when a co-worker dies in the office. Many times I've been called to give counseling because you're with somebody in the office for years and years, every day of the week. You grow up like family and then one dies. And you wonder, did I do enough? Did I tell them about Jesus? 
did I minister to them? Was there something else I could have done? Having been sharing the same office for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Neighbors, spouses. These are the last days. And hear me when I say any moment now, the last record in heaven may very well be open. If it is yours tonight, you can rejoice because the last entry, the last entry in your book will be that you came to this altar tonight to surrender your heart to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can the church give them a round of applause? Come on, everybody, give them a round of applause. Last entry. Praise God. Come Sabbath morning is our baptismal service. The word of God says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Your record is stamped by the blood of Christ. Forgiven. Amen. Forgiven forgiven Jesus says that's my best friend I talk with him this morning may God bless you I'm going to ask my friend Pastor Omar Palmer to come and lift up this congregation these folks before the Lord and their decision represented by the, by the, by the papers here is there anybody else before we pray says preacher I need to be in that number is there anybody else before we pray the heads are bowed, the eyes are closed. We're going to talk to the master tonight. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. We talk to our Father. Almighty, omnipotent, great God. We know you as the one who was the one who is, the one who is to come. We sat tonight and we heard the hallowed words as spoken by your manservant under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. As we listened, our hearts burned within us. We yearn for that moment, dear God, when sin and shame and sadness and sickness will be no more. Yes, Lord. And it is for that reason that set. Yes. We know the books will be open. Yes. We pray that all of us here will be able to stand on that great day. And so, Father, because of your blood, because of your blood, because of your blood yes, God. that was shed on Calvary, I ask that you will stamp each person mm. with the four prints of your hand, oh yes. God. May you stamp each person with your blood that was shed so that nobody here will be afraid of the judgment because we know you. Lord, I lift up before you every card yes, Lord. that was written and signed. Yes, Lord. Every name on each piece of paper. Uh, each name represents a struggle. Each name represents a concern. Mm. Each name represents a challenge. But no name in this box can eclipse your grace and your goodness and your overcoming power. Yes. And so right now, Dr. Jesus, I lift this box to you mm. and I ask that your blessing will come down and you will work a miracle on each individual here yes. tonight. Yes. Grand deliverance, grand victory. Yes. Help each person to overcome and may that be done only by your blood, we pray. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Let God's people say, Amen. 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 Stand right where you are. Stand right where you are. 
I want you to understand, stand right where you are. I want you to understand this. The purpose why we have church is to help save souls. Our next move is on Sabbath morning to give your heart to the Lord in baptism. That's when your little local good for not name will be transferred in the Lamb's Book of Life. Is the church with me? That's when your name will be written down with golden pen. Is the church with me? And you can go to bed knowing that all is well with your soul. And if you slip up after baptism, Jesus says, that's all right. You have an advocate with the Father, who is Jesus Christ, the Son. Hey, if you make a mistake, he says, that's all right. That my blood has never lost its power. So I'm going to ask you, to, you guys here to help me sing with the praise team. They don't know it. But it is a song uh, the Spirit asks me to sing with you and for you. I want you to sing it as you go home tonight. As before we close. Here's it. The blood that Jesus Take it away. 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 Sing that song, the blood. Yes, sir. Give me strength from day to day. It will never. It will never lose. It's power. It's power. Oh, for it reaches. Oh. There is one more phase, the judgment. Judgment will not take place when Jesus comes. Judgment will come before Jesus comes. When he comes, the judgment is finished. Will you be ready? It was indeed a power-packed message tonight. And just to remind you that tomorrow we will not be streaming. However, we will be live on CJC YouTube channel with your health and you with Dr. Kemar Douglas. The topic for tomorrow is fibroids. At this time, we say goodbye to you and join us again on Friday night for family night. Over to Newland Praise. Christ has gone away to prepare far beyond.